Hello, my name is Leon Turner from Trend Controls and I'm going to take you through a short demonstration of a data center supervisor as set up in IQ Vision. IQ Vision is Trend's uh, supervisor of choice uh, and is built on the Niagara 4 platform. So what you can see in front of you is a completely fictitious data center, which certainly doesn't exist in Slough. Uh, this one particularly is a very small type installation, so a kind of edge data center with three uh, racks, rows, sorry, of racks. Now, what we're trying to present here is the idea that the supervisor for a data center doesn't have to be complicated and can be done um, in a very simple fashion. What we have really tried to lean on here is something which we would refer to as supervision by exception. So this means presenting the operator with very little information really, but only things they absolutely have to know are made obvious. So on the screen in front of you, you can see that most of the colors are quite muted. There isn't an awful lot of data splashed all over the place, but from this very uh, top screen, the landing screen in fact, you can see that we have a little help button, we can have a home button, um, there are some things which have red keys on them, and these are typically things which we want the operator to go and investigate straight away. So they are critical failures. And we've also put in um, orange uh, parts here, which sort of indicate that perhaps something isn't quite right. So this would be, for example, one of your three chillers, uh, your redundant array of chillers. One of them is perhaps misperforming and so on. So it's not a critical fault, but it's something you would need to keep your eye on. Now, if I dive straight in, you can see that one of my generators or something happens to be wrong with one, some of the generators or one of the generators. So if I click on that button, it will take me into the generator screen. Now, it's very obvious one of them is performing better than the other one. I think you can probably tell which one. So it just so happens I've put in a little reset. So it says it has zero active alarms, which is interesting, but we can probably go and see uh, it says generator trip okay and there's also a fuel level warning but that's not necessarily a job for right now to worry about so if i hit the button we can try and force a reset now iq vision is typically used to supervise a trend systems for the most part however it is multi-protocol it speaks many languages so for our example here we are talking modbus ip out to our our um, generators in some of the other examples, it could be SNMP to talk to equipment already in the data in the racks. It could be MBUS to talk to meters. It could be BACnet to talk to chiller packs and so on and so forth. It very, it very much is a, a capable and multi-protocol solution. Now you can see I've, I've fixed my generator issue, which uh, didn't take an awful lot of work, I'll admit. Um, there's certain other things we can do on this screen. For example, we can go away and look at the fuel levels and I just happen to have put in a little piece here which means if we get a tanker in to fill the fuel back up again I can fill it up and we get a little report saying the last fuel was refilled and how much fuel it took to re to fill this up any of these little screens can be printed out or indeed included in reports and emailed and so on there's also uh, something here which uh, is a service record and again I've put this in um, now it's this particular over screen here, um, overview here is just for reference. It tells me what I need to do, my, my daily, weekly, monthly tasks and so on. But I can just as easily actually get in and perhaps fill in a report saying I've done these tests and I've actually made these checks and then file it. And what that will do is commit it to a PDF in the background, which I can then have on record to prove how uh, that I am on top of the servicing and it tells me when the next generator test is going to be. So that's all for now for the generators. Now if I go to some of the other overviews we have an electrical overview, a very simplified electrical map of the data center. This is not complicated at all as you can see. Now I've put in some uh, warnings here again in the same principle red is bad so we've lost one of our our lines to row two so one of the redundant supply lines from the breakers has dropped out that's not major problem um, we have some details here as well we can go in and look at all the supplies uh, for today this week 
So you can see it's averaged it all out. It's smoothed it from this week, uh, yesterday, and so on. Oh, no, no data for yesterday. Uh, same for current and the same for power with a little summary at the top. So if I close that window, and it just so happens we also have embedded in here a PDF for the schematic, the full wiring schematic. All this really does is show us that we can actually put full documentation in the installation for the operator to refer to should they need to. So they don't need to be going off to other systems to find simple documentation. And again, I won't dwell too much on this right now. Um, another one of the subsystems which may or may not be included is a camera. So these ones here are a webcam and quite simply this is just a web frame in injected into one of our graphics. However, with the appropriate driver, this could just as easily be a quite a sophisticated camera system with tilt, pan, zoom and so on controls actually in the in the graphic, including anything from uh, data video recorders and so on. Um, it's a matter of integration, really. So there's our um, completely made up camera views, as I mentioned earlier. Nothing going wrong there, as you can see. Now, if I move on a little bit, we're back to the generators. You can see this is now green for good. We'll move on again. And our chillers. Now, once again, we have a big red thing saying something has gone wrong. Well, you can actually refer to the manual down here if we want to. Um, again, it's just an imported PDF and really only placed here to make the operator's life easier so we can go and find it. You'll notice we have the big boy chiller from Chili Things Chillers, a uh, very, very well thought of model. Um, and we can see we have a, a fault on uh, Chiller 4 with some open alarm. So here we go. Hopefully you, you may have heard the irritating noise there, which tells me there is an alarm. Uh, it has a compressor fault. OK, well, I know about that, so I'm going to acknowledge that alarm and uh, send someone out to to go and fix that or at least look at it yeah it's in fault so that's going to need looking at i won't bother resetting that one here and you can also see we've used some of the analytics to work out what is going wrong so again in red text the temperature dif difference between the supply and return temps is surprisingly small which means the chiller is not operating correctly it clearly isn't chilling the water down before supplying it so that will need looking at if I move on again, uh, we have an overview of the racks themselves now. And again, a very stylized and simplified view. So nothing photorealistic, nothing fluorescent or flashy, just all the data someone might need to know. Um, no photographs and that sort of thing. It just confuses the issue. So we've got some averaged out temperatures and humidities here. You can see one of them is quite high. And this sliding graph up the middle here is, is in the red. So we have got a problem somewhere in that rack. It's quite obvious it's this, sorry, somewhere in that row, and it's quite obvious it's this rack here. Uh, and if I actually click on it, we can see a graph of the the temperatures in that rack. Uh, sorry, it, yes, in that rack itself. And you can see, because of the red flag here, everything is in alarm. Uh, so the rack is quite warm. Uh, and if I look over the last seven days, yeah, it's been, it's been this way for a long time. Now, I can change this um, because should I want to take out a lot of the, the noise in that graph? There's an awful lot of samples. Let's try turning it on this time. Right, so now we're, we're down to a sort of a much simplified one hour. So we can now see the actual trend as to what's been going on rather than all the noise. There's other things we can do. We can turn it into a bar chart, for example, again, to sort of maybe make it a little more obvious as to what the, the trends are in the data. And in fact, if we wanted to try and work out at any particular time what's going wrong, we can look at the delta. So this will pick out where there are big changes in temperature. And then you can see in the last hour, as I'm speaking, we've had quite a, compared to the other range here, we've had quite a change. So we can do an awful lot in this, in this graph view. So again, that is something the operator needs to go and look at. Now, I've put a few more graphs in here. So we have rack temperatures, uh, just so we can go and see. So that's row one, row two, and no surprise there, one of them is much higher than the others, and row three. Now these are all averaged over the previous 30 minutes, so it's a, a rolling 30 minute window. Um, I could also, which might make life a bit easier, I can look at the ranking. So these are the, right, the racks in order of 
average temperature averaged over today all the data we have today and again here we have rows 9 and 10 are much hotter than any of the others really you can see that the the rolling average is significantly higher and row 3 yeah less of a difference as we would expect using the same principle we can actually check on the loading as well so how full the racks are how they are performing so row 2 we can see most straight away that uh, rack 7 this one uh, has a much lower loading than rack five. So this is where we would go to, to, to maybe slot some more uh, processors in. And again, same thing on rows two and three. We can actually see which ones are most heavily occupied or used and which ones are lowest in a very quick and easy way. Uh, this shouldn't change because we haven't done any work on this. So this month looks exactly the same as yesterday. Um, there are various other little graphs on here. For example, um, we have humidity versus the row one average temperatures. Um, and again, I've just made this so it's quite obvious to the user. Uh, that is auto. We can go to last month and so on and so forth. We can change these. And in fact, you can actually save this if you want so that next time I bring it up, it will be month to date rather than anything else. I'm not going to save those today. Now, if I go to the uh, UPS rooms, again, a very simple little reading. We've got some little um, dials here, again, just to make it obvious as to the state of affair and that this particular little dial here reads out the battery level so we can see when it's getting low and so forth. Um, and we also have, again, some charts which show the various phases and the currents therein. So the last 24 hours, and I can, again, I can flip through these and really change how they, they look at any time. Now, in this view, we're looking at the, the cooling. So our little auxiliary, um, sorry, our little fan core units on the outside, which uh, feed the UPS room and the battery room. And again, one of them is showing in a fault. Um, it's, it's not working. So if we pop the little graphic up, uh, yeah, nothing going on. Now, one of the features is if I choose to enable it is I could actually try and just drive the fan on. We'll, we'll do it for three seconds so I don't have to talk for too long before I wait for something to happen. So we'll try and run the fan and see if anything actually happens. It tells me the filter dirty. filter is dirty. The filter is still dirty, so that has done approximately nothing. And a healthy one. Well, you can see it looks very different. So the filter is OK. We've got cooling going on. and so on and we've got a little pie chart up here which is driven out of the analytics which tells me how much free cooling versus mechanical cooling we are enjoying at the moment and finally we have a lighting system now i've just tripped it to go and do a lights testing so what this would be doing is driving our resident um, dali system from xor another honeywell company um, and we can run a remote test so we don't have to be on site to do this and the test has completed and everything is OK. Uh, yet another thing that we can drive from afar without ever having to go there. Now, the recording I'm showing you is all on my browser. This one in particular is in Firefox. This will display equally well on an iPad using the Safari browser or on, a, on an iPhone or um, any other kind of generic Android phone. In fact, one of the beauties of the, um, the, the whole HTML5 experience is that it doesn't matter which platform you uh, launch it from. The experience is pretty much the same. And finally, we can see we've got someone on site in actual fact. Now, I've cheated here and given um, us a um, an occupancy pattern. So as I record, it is 10 o'clock on a Wednesday. So if I just tweak this and save it, so we would expect the site not to be occupied. We should hopefully see that is now no one there. I've done it from a, an expected occupancy pattern. It could just as easily be triggered from PIRs and so on to generate this little graphic here to show when someone is present or not. Now, as I say, it's a very simple overview, um, nothing too complicated. Uh, I hope this goes some way to um, helping the understanding that uh, IQ Vision isn't just for offices and so on. It can be put into very specified use, very specific use, such as data centers. Uh, I'll just do one final check. 
yeah, I'll arm's still okay, but I've checked those. Now, if you do want to go and check this out yourself, please get in touch with us. Um, we're more than happy to give out the username and password. And as part of the online documentation, as I mentioned, there is actually a user guide for the system itself. Something which would be very helpful in almost any installation and certainly in our demo. And it, um, it is written up in full. It's almost like a descriptions of operations for the demonstration itself. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope that was um, interesting. And if you have any questions or uh, any observations, please do feel free to get in touch with us. Thank you very much.